Welcome to another module of McGill Academy's tutorials. Uh, this time we're going to be teaching you about the various tools and features of 3D modeling in SOLIDWORKS. So uh, I've got the remnants of Bob here from last time. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete this because we don't have any use for it. So as we highlight over there and delete these guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new model. Okay. So let's say we just want to make a rectangle. No issue, nothing complicated there, and exit the sketch. Now, there's a couple of things we can do from here. Uh, first, let's go to the Features tab, and you'll notice you have various tools available to you from the get-go. So I'll go over them one by one. Extruded Boss slash Base is essentially a linear way of making a 3D object. So if you can imagine this, what we're doing is we're taking multiple copies of this sketch and sort of stretching them along any axis we choose. Uh, it's sort of like an integral in a way. So what we're going to do is we're going to click extruded boss slash base, click any corner of this sketch. It automatically selects the sketch, as you can see. Uh, it's under our selected contours. And you'll notice what we can do is drag this out and we've gone from a rectangle to a 3D rectangular prism. It's pretty cool. Furthermore, uh, what you could do is select different ways of uh, extruding this object. So currently the blind method is sort of, it just goes without any constraint. You sort of give it uh, a distance and it'll automatically go there for you. But as you can see, there are numerous other ways of doing this as well, uh, such as bringing it up close to another face. That's particularly good if you have any assemblies or small models that need to be interconnected with one another. Um, you can also offset it from that surface. Pretty much, again, just play with these tools, see how they work, see what works best for you in each scenario. But for the most part, you're not going to go wrong with this blind tool and the up to surface tool. Now, as you can notice, we've extruded in one direction, this arrow's direction. But as you may guess, uh, by the fact that we have direction two here, we can extrude in the opposite direction as well. So say we want to extrude by 0.5 inches. Oh, sorry, my bad, 0.5 inches. <laughs> so as you can see, this was our previous sketch right here, this blue outline and this yellow border is that extrusion in the opposite direction. So as you can see, we've gone 6.6 .6 inches to the left and 0 0.5 inches to the right. Furthermore, we could also uh, draft either side. And drafting, as you can see by this little photo here, this little logo, it sort of tapers your object on either whichever side you choose. So as you can see, from a certain angle, so we put a 20 degree angle, we've tapered our object off. Uh, there's another way of doing this that I prefer a bit more. Um, it's using the lofted tool, but I'll go over that next. So we can cancel that. Time for some more cool tricks. Uh, I personally love using the revolved tool as well. So like the extrude tool, uh, we're gonna be creating a 3D model from this two dimensional sketch. But as you can see, rather than following a linear path, we followed a circular path. And it's fairly intuitive to use. So for instance, I'm gonna set a 180 degree of rotation. As you can see, we've created sort of a semi-sphere or semi-cylindrical object, as you can call it. Uh, you can change the angle to whatever you'd like. Uh, furthermore, uh, I'm going to deselect this, go back into our revolved boss slash base, because I also want to revisit the fact that uh, we could change our axis of revolution. So as you can see, we're revolving in a different way. So what you could do is select this line, for instance, and as you can see, the revolution occurs entirely around that axis. So that's particularly useful. Uh, furthermore, just like the uh, extrude tool, we can set multiple directions. So say if you have a portion that isn't quite linear or you have sort of like a lip hanging out, this is how you can uh, model that. So as you can see, we have a 205 degree revolution, but it's not split up evenly. Now tools of extrusion and revolution are pretty cool. 
But you may be asking, how do we get more complex shapes? Well, I'll show you. Uh, the first introduction to that is the swap ball slash base tool. And you'll notice it asks two, technically three things from you when you start up the tool. So first it needs a profile. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Essentially the profile is where you're gonna start your sweep from. So it's the shape that you're gonna originate from. And then it'll ask for a path. So think of it if you're extruding this sketch in some direction, some three-dimensional direction, you'll need a path or some sort of surface constraining where that sketch goes. So if you look at the sweep icon, think of it as a bunch of these little circular uh, curves that dictate where this circle is going to start and end. Furthermore, you could add more constraints by putting in more guide curves. Now, to use this tool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a piece of uh, reference geometry, so a plane. I'm going to click the feature manager, and I'm going to select a plane. So this is the plane we originated our original sketch from, our original sketch for Bob. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another plane that's offset from that, so a 5-inch offset. So we'll put that down, get a sketch going on there, and center this. So press F. There you go. I'm just going to make an arbitrary rectangle right there. doesn't really matter. For the purpose of our demonstration, this will work. And what you'll notice is we have two different sketches with a distance between them, and they don't have matching profiles. So a simple extrusion from one sketch to the other is not going to work. If you think about it, it's like making a rectangular prism that doesn't encapsulate the volume that you'd have from this triangular pyramid that we'd be creating with the swept ball slash base tool. However, the one thing is we don't have one of the necessary elements of our sweep. And that's a guide curve. We don't have any guide curves telling us where to go. So you could press the curve option here, and it'll give you multiple options. For this particular instance, the curve through reference points option will treat you fine. If you have the specific coordinates of where you want your curves to start, uh, by all means, use the X, Y, Z uh, points. But for this purpose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click one corner, I'm going to click the other corner, boom. There we go. Now you may be thinking, shouldn't, these, shouldn't this be sufficient uh, for our sweep? Uh, should we have any issues with this? And unfortunately, yes, we're gonna have some issues. So as you can notice, what it did is it only followed that one guide curve we set it. And it's logical, it makes sense too. However, if we wanna avoid this issue and actually do what we wanted to do, which was to take this sketch uh, profile right here that we had, this larger rectangle, and constrain it to this one, we need more guide curves. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to press curve through reference points, and I'm going to set another curve. Let's see how that works. So swap ball slash base, press that, and then you click on here, make sure that's selected, and click on the other one. And you'll notice we're getting closer but we're still not where we want to be because you see this bottom isn't constrained at all. So what you want to do is set another set of guide curves as well. So there you go. Sweat boss slash base, click your profile, easy. And then boom, it is all constrained. How nice is that? Next, we have the lofted boss slash base tool. So I'm going to click this here. And if you can notice, I've deleted the guidelines. And you'll see why. So this is a bit skewed. Obviously, this is not what we want. But what we could do is move this to another corner and boom. If you notice, what we've done is we've essentially done what we wanted to do with the swept boss slash base, but without a single guide curve. Of course, you can complement this model by putting in a guide curve, but essentially it automatically draws a guide curve for you through this line and these two points. You could augment where it starts from. So as you can notice, if you don't have it selected on the same corner, it'll give you some weird results. So you'll have to play around with it a bit. But this is also another variant to the swept tool that is a lot more convenient in my opinion. 
Uh, it could work for any type of sketch too. So this is one particular uh, model that we can make, but if I delete that, edit the sketch, and say I want to, mm, I'll get rid of this guy. So delete all these lines. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah. And the reason why these are showing up is because of the fact that we had guide curves associated with them, but we don't need those corners anymore. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put in a hexagon, just for fun. Just a random hexagon and put in the lofted boss slash base tool. So we'll click that profile and we'll click this profile. As you can notice, we don't even need a guide curve. It automatically produces an albeit strange shape, but a shape uh, that we'd like. Again, if you want a, a more consistent, more solid model, definitely use guide curves. They will be your best friend. But this is just another way of showing how you could do the same thing with less work. Now, finally for this video, I'm also going to show the boundary boss slash base tool. So if you click with it, you'll notice that what it does is actually very similar to what we did with the lofted tool. And, you know, normally I'd go with the lofted tool, but this tool provides us with some additional tools that we necessarily wouldn't even have if we use uh, the lofted boss slash base tool. So if you click this uh, little drop down menu and you'll notice it's selected uh, to this little uh, vertex here, we can choose a normal to profile loft. And this is going to be extremely convenient when it comes to selecting your lofts. So as you can notice, we did the same for our uh, other sketch as well. And this is an option you won't have if you use the lofted boss slash base tool. And you can adjust it however much you'd like. It's really up to you. Furthermore, if you're not happy with the result this is giving you, say you want your uh, normal curve to be a bit more steep, what you can do is essentially press this button and it will augment that for you. So it changes the rate at which you reach that uh, slope of normalcy to your sketch. Furthermore, direction two here, um, it's a bit difficult to describe, but pretty much what it gives you is an option to select another curve as a boundary on any particular side. So say we had like a arced curve here, what it would do is it would essentially keep everything as it is on every other side, but on the affected side, the extrusion would essentially sort of balloon up to that curve. You'd have to play around with it a bit, uh, just like most other things. That wraps up the first part of this uh, sort of featuring tutorial. Uh, for the next part, we're going to cover all of the tools that uh, sort of come next. So this mostly deals with cuts, patterning, and mirroring intersection. Just a lot of the same stuff we've seen with sketching. But anyways, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.